Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger, and I'm excited for today's episode because the question for you is, how can you improve your well-being and take your life to a higher vibration? The sponsors of this show are Dr. Dane Here and Access Consciousness. They do beautiful energy work out in the world. You can take their classes. You can become a facilitator, get any of their products. Go to drdanehere.com as well as accessconsciousness.com. The Dare to Dream podcast has been nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards as well as a Webby Award and is ranked in the top bed co- best podcasts in all of USA in self-improvement. And this past week, we were trending also in the countries of Belarus, Uruguay, and St. Lucia. I love this, you guys. Thank you so much for getting it. (laughs) Thanks for being on the path. And thank you for tuning into this number one transformation conversation. The show is what it is after 14 years next month because of you. I am a media visibility coach. I take your book to a guaranteed international bestseller. I also ask you, what is stopping you from writing your book? And if you've got a book inside of you and you would like to publish it this year, then join our book writing membership. I am your expert guide. The students are amazing and they are writing phenomenal books. And so can you go to debbiedashinger.com slash Visible Visionaries. That's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash Visible Visionaries. Get your book, get your message, get your legacy out into the world. And so on to our show today, my guest is Athena Bari, who wants to raise your vibes. Athena is the author of an easy to use guide on energy healing and runs a popular and engaged crystal Reiki business. Fun fact, Athena is from a Hollywood dynasty and is the niece of Rita Hayworth, Donna Reed, and the cousin of Ginger Rogers. Athena is a certified Reiki master, crystal Reiki master, and chakra healer, and the creator of Crystal Reiki Healer, one of the fastest growing online presences. In addition to creating content for Instagram and her website, Athena contributes to podcasts and radio shows and performs Reiki healing locally in California, as well as helping to heal people around the globe with distance healing. To learn more, go to her website, crystalreikihealer.com. And with that, I welcome Athena to Dare to Dream. It is so great to have you. I love, thank you so much for that beautiful intro. It is so lovely to be here and I'm so grateful for you and how many people you get to reach. Congratulations on your podcast. Um, It's really a blessing to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, for me and for the audience as well. I'm so grateful uh, to be connected with you. It's always fun to learn the new things that people are doing. And I was really tickled with your niche because I thought I've actually never heard that before. Crystals and Reiki and chakras like this. It actually makes sense when you hear it, this beautiful blend. So you wrote this book, this new book, which I've read, Raise Your Vibes. How did you get into this journey, this healing journey? And how did you get to the point where it's like, oh, not only do I have this worldwide presence, but now I think I need to take it to the next step and write a book. Oh, thank you so much. Yes, well, my journey begins um, very humbly, like uh, many people out there looking for healing. Mm -hmm. I had suffered with chronic back pain for about 16 years, and it ended in um, surgery. Mm -hmm. And prior to that, I had been looking and I tried everything across the board in Western medicine, how to heal, what pills to take, what exercises to do, um, different therapies. I mean, I had tried everything, strengthening my core. And I still was left with, you know, debilitating back pain. And I just thought I got to a point, my children were getting a little bigger. And I thought, you know, there has to be something that I can do that's better. I I need to take my power back because I'm, I can't live like this. I'm not, you know, I wasn't as good of a mom. I wasn't as good of a wife, friend. Chronic pain is no joke. 
That's chronic pain very is, debilitating. It's very debilitating. And I really was in a, in a point in my life where I had to make a choice to make some changes. Mm-hmm. And that's when I came into Reiki and I just thought this is such a beautiful healing modality. I need to learn more about it. How do I do this? Where do I find it? Where do I find a practitioner? And my husband was like, you're going to do Reiki? Like what? Who does Reiki? I said, well, I'm going to do Reiki. So this is what we'll do. And I had already loved crystals and, and I loved the blend that the, the two energies together, I felt it was just a really nice union and, you know, everything that's in our body, um, whether it's an emotional trauma or a spiritual trauma, it manifests physically. So even though I had had an accident back in the day, there was no reason that I should have this kind of chronic back pain. So I really wanted to work on healing myself. And when I was in the hospital, I had already become a Reiki master and I was even trying to grow bone. Reiki is amazing for bone growth. And in my x-ray, you could see my body trying to grow bone. Like the the bone was a little longer in my back, Um, the pars, it's called a pars. And it didn't quite catch. And that fracture is what, you know, my husband's a chiropractor and he's like, I can't, I can't do anything for this. Like no amount of therapy, you have to fix it. So I started doing Reiki for that, like trying to channel, like lead me to the best doctor, you know, how do I get there? And in the hospital afterwards, I was in such incredible, mind-blowing pain. I mean, just, I mean, I have three kids and this was nothing. <laughs> like all three together didn't combine, like the nerves, the back, the incisions, like, oh my goodness. And at one point, and my jaw was rattling, I was shaking. May I ask you, did you have your back fused? I did. Yes. Mm. I had a fusion at my L5S1. And I I was in an extraordinary amount of pain and sobbing. And at one point in the hospital, my husband screams over my sobs. You're a Reiki master, for God's sakes. Do Reiki on yourself. And it was like this light switch. Like, oh my gosh, you're right. I can do that. Okay, let's try it. You know, I'd only ever done it in nice, calm, soothing, Mm -hmm. you know, healing rooms where it's all lovely and calm. And nothing like this. So I started to do my hand placements and channeling the energy to myself. And suddenly, like 45 seconds in, my jaw stopped rattling. My breathing came back to me. All of a sudden, I could see I had all these people in my room with me that I didn't didn't even know were there. And it was like this amazing, just light switch, like a testimony. Oh my God, this isn't just something that's okay, it feels good. It's nice. No, this is something that really, really works and is really powerful and you can do yourself. And so I just thought I need to share this. I need to bring this out to the world and let people know that you don't have to be dependent on our, on our healthcare. You don't have to be dependent on the doctor who tells you, you know, this is what you have to take to feel better. All of our healing is starts with us. It all starts with us, how we take care of ourselves, um, different modalities that we can do on our own. And so writing this book was really, you know, it's really like, as one of my reviews said, a labor of love, (laughs) because it it really was, it took all of this hardship, all of this pain. And I was able to channel that into a place that hopefully um, will help other people on their journey. And, you know, we're healing from so many things right now, from emotional issues, you know, depression, anxieties, um, self-love is an issue, confidence, all of these things that really came into focus this past year, especially with the pandemic, where we were forced to turn in, tune in, discover so much about ourselves. And so hopefully this will you know, lead people to a better light and understanding of how they can take their power back and really heal themselves. Mm. You know, people who have their back fused don't always do very well after surgery, not just what you're talking about, that extreme pain, the thereafter. Uh, It's not often very successful and it necessitates further fusion, right? Further surgery. So with that in mind, how have you done since? 
So you have this great awakening. Your husband yells at you. You're in the hospital. It's like, oh, okay, I have this at my disposal. 45 seconds in, everything calms, you're present. And what has the going forward been like using Reiki and your other modalities for your particular body? Yes, it's it has been an amazing journey. Um, part of why I put off that surgery for so long is that it does have a very high failure rate. Um, back surgery in general, not just fusion, but any back surgery has a very high failure rate. And it's a very intense um, surgery. I mean, your, your back is a weight bearing joint, really. So any kind of, you know, weight, standing, laying, everything affects it. And in the months following uh, my surgery, I couldn't go upstairs for a while. I stayed downstairs here in my healing room, actually, which I didn't know was going to be where I was healing. And uh, I laid with my crystals. I mean, I was sleeping with crystals. I was sleeping with Reiki. I created all these different new shower meditations and affirmations. And like the first week that I was home, I was writing with a dry erase marker affirmations. I am strong. I am healing. I am loved. Just you know, in the morning I would see this and it was really empowering. Like, yes, I've got this, I can do this. And now I'm several years out from the surgery and, you know, knock on wood, as I always say, um, I've been pain-free. I've had no pain. I have six screws and two brackets in there. And um, I thought maybe in the colder months that I would struggle, but I really have had, I've been really good, I have to say. And part of that is really taking care of myself. You know, I do self Reiki every day. Um, I have my gratitude practice every morning, every day. Um, working on other people, you know, when I help others um, heal themselves, I'm also working on myself. That's one of the beautiful things about Reiki. You're, you're channeling this divine healing energy, this light. And as you channel it, where does it go? Well, it goes through you to the person, right? So it's not me, it's not me healing. I'm channeling this light, but as I do that, I'm welcoming that beautiful healing energy into myself as well. So that's really been a huge part of my self-care and um, staying, staying strong um, spiritually, emotionally, physically. Um, the pandemic was really hard for a lot of people. Um, my husband and I, we always said, well, it was, really good for us. Our relationship became really strong where our, we got to hang out with our kids so much. I wrote a book. I, I mean, it was um, kind of an amazing time. Like there's always a silver lining. And that was, that was my silver lining. Yes, we were frustrated. We couldn't go out. We couldn't do anything really. But we had a real opportunity to tune in and, and turn into what was important to us. And, and for me, it was doing so much healing. It was amazing for people really all over the globe. I mean, right now I've been working with people in India just to, because I know they're going through a lot in the current circumstances, um, but people all over Australia and Europe and um, Austria, everywhere. I mean, there it's it's been a beautiful way to connect with people that I probably wouldn't have if I hadn't gone into Reiki as a healer. And you're working with people globally and the people that you work with locally, do you have an office somewhere in Southern California? Well, I can work in my husband's office. He has a chiropractic office, but I really like to do it here in my healing room. Um, you know, this, this, this space is so sacred and represents so much healing energy. I mean, I, I healed myself here. And so that really, that energy kind of, it just remains, it stays. And everybody who comes into my office here is now my office slash healing room. But now everybody that comes in here, they feel that, you know, they sense that. So yes, I can do it in an office and I have. Um, and for some people, they like that more kind of clinical feel, which is great. Um, but I prefer to do it here in my home and in my office tucked away from everyone. And it's just been beautiful. The outside is gorgeous. Now that the weather's warming up, I, I do the Reiki healings outside mm -hmm. and we have the waterfall running. And mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's kind of like your background. It's like a beautiful, serene, you know, environment, which is wonderful when you're in the moment. But for people who are in a lot of pain, I also will go to the hospital 
Um, I have my minister's license, so I'm a licensed reverend, and I'll go in, and um, hospitals will allow me to go in and do Reiki for them. It's also wonderful for people who are in hospice care, just to help them, you know, have an easier transition. Um, a lot of the time, they'll be holding on for, you know, for reasons of love or fear, and Reiki really helps them to feel you know, more at peace and settled and have an easier transition and for the families as well. And you mentioned self Reiki. So that sounds like a process. Is that something that people can learn? Can we do this at home? Absolutely. Absolutely. I would love for more people to do this on their own. Um, in, in my book, Raise Your Vibes, the, I, it's called a self-attunement, but it's really me attuning the reader. Um, I've blessed the entire book with Reiki. I don't think this has ever been done before, and other Reiki masters, so far I've had really nice feedback at the way I put it together. I wasn't sure how it would be received, um, but it's a really nice way if you follow the steps, you follow my words, my guidance, and I literally have attuned these pages to help the person channel. And then what you can do that, you can channel Reiki then to anything, to your crystals, to your life, to your affirmations, to your physical body, your emotional body. Um, it's really a beautiful thing to do your own self-care. Um, you're taking your power back. You're responsible for how you feel. And I know sometimes it's easier to, you know, maybe say, oh, the doctor's fault or this guy's fault or he did it, she did it. But when we take that responsibility for our own well-being and then we feel good, the amount of just the overwhelming feeling of like, I did this is so incredible and so empowering and gives you so much clarity on, on how amazing you really are, how much you can do if you just put your mind to it. And of course, the more you practice, you do have to practice, you have to do the work, but is the more you practice, the more you really start to sense that energy as it is and this this universal feeling of love you start to really tune into it and feel it more mm. you have something in your book called a reiki blessing attunement ceremony which is meant to usher in this beautiful energy of reiki that you're talking about and basically with our hands and prayer in front of our heart we say out loud i and our name so in this case i debbie dashinger call upon Reiki, the universal life force. I am ready and open to receive the Reiki attunement. So talk, talk us through that. What else about that process do we need to know? Well, you have to have an open mind, right? So having an open mind, allowing yourself to receive is really, is really the big one. Um, so take, for example, people who are religious. They have incredible faith. I mean, these people, they, they've never seen Jesus or God or Messiah or whoever, but they have incredible faith and belief that this, that this is real. And people that are in the spiritual world, a lot of the time kind of struggle with this faith, you know, sometimes because maybe it's not in God and we'll say source or universe, but it's, it's harder when we're manifesting, we tend to blame ourselves. Why isn't this happening right now? Why can't I make this work? But when you start to open yourself to receive the blessing that you're going to receive from this, you really, you can feel like an inner sense of peace. So people don't have to know Reiki. They don't have to be a Reiki pr practitioner, but just to say yeah. these words actually invoke something, something occurs and a shift happens. And a shift happens. And, and keep in mind, this isn't just from, you know, you're not just reading a book. You're reading pages that have been blessed with Reiki energy. Mm -hmm. So the intention there is if you are open to receiving, you will be able to receive this blessing. If you're reading it and you're like, eh, I'm not so sure. Okay, well, maybe you're not open or you're not ready yet. And that's okay. And even if you don't want to do the attunement section and you just want to try some of these other fun rituals, that's okay too. I mean, everybody's different and what resonates for them will be different. What resonates for you today might be different tomorrow. Um, what part of the book works for you today might be different tomorrow and that's okay. It's really, there's no judgment here. It's about helping you help yourself on your journey. And if you are open to receiving this beautiful energy, I mean, please do because it, 
it has been absolutely life changing. So like what me. kind of things happen? Somebody says, I, Debbie Dashinger, call upon Reiki, the universal life force. I am ready and open to receive the Reiki attunement. What kind of things happen for people? Well, everybody's different, but for some, they'll just have an overwhelming sense of peace. Some people get very tired and they feel like they want to sleep. Um, some people will have physical sensations. It could be tingling. It could be like a warming sensation. Sometimes their hands will get hot. Sometimes they'll feel it wherever in the chakra area, maybe where they really need it to channel energy. They'll often feel some sensation. Sometimes that's tingling. It's, it's a warmth. It's a love. Um, other things, people will feel like they're floating. Some people will see colors. Some people, like if you do this while your eyes are closed, sometimes people will see flashes of color behind their lids. Um, it's really unique to you because you're your own energy and you're different. And that's, that's what's so beautiful about it is it has no judgment about who you are or where you're from or what you practice or what your life is. Um, it is open and available to everyone. And mind you, we all have this. We all have this ability to channel this energy. It's just now with this, you're able to kind of open that channel a little bit. So say you have like, you know, um, like a like how a dam works, holding back a river. And if there's like a little crack, you'll have like little seeps of water. So you'll have it, it'll trickle through. But when you open those floodgates, it's like that energy just pours through you and you really do sense and feel the difference and you'll see it in your life. For some people that shift is immediate. It's like right away, they feel it. And then some people it's, you know, a few days later or the following week where all of a sudden they just kind of stop like, wait a minute, I'm feeling differently about this. I'm looking at life a little different or aha moments like, now I know what it is I want to do with myself. So everybody kind of responds differently, um, but it is all the all together. It's a shift in our energy and how you respond to that is your own way of responding to that. You have so many amazing rituals in the book. And so readers are going to get a lot of great information on that. And one of the things you talk about is sound healing. I'm really into sound healing. Tell me about sound healing for you? How has that impacted your life? How do you use it? So sound healing is another one. Pretty much every, well, not pretty much everything that's in this book, I have done myself. So I am really my own guinea pig. Um, I, I haven't tried it. I'm not going to tell somebody else to do it because I don't know. So sound healing is really good. Sound has a vibration and um, everything has a vibration really, even our thoughts have a frequency. And with sound, you can actually physically feel this. I mean, if you've ever stood next to, you know, a speaker or you turn the, the radio up real high in your car, you can see that bass vibrating and moving things, right? So that really, our cells are made of mostly water. Our bodies are mostly water and water is, like a ripple effect, when you when you give that vibration to water, um, you can see how it actually moves, how it heals. And there, there have been studies, um, doctors have gone over this and what happens with water when you speak loving vibrations to it, like even just the word love, you can see it creates these beautiful crystal shapes versus you know anger or fear, it ends up being like this messy blob. So when you use sound healing, especially when you're turning into certain frequencies, that really can help restore your energy, restore your cells on a, on a cellular level so that you're functioning in a healthy, vibrant way. Um, and just that, may, think about um, also like a song that maybe you knew from childhood. That will spark a memory in you because water holds memory. So when you hear that music, it will literally spark a memory in you that maybe you hadn't thought about in, you know, decades or, you know, years, depending how old you are. And that will trigger something and that can work really well for healing too. So when people go to like, say uh, a sound bath, for example, that can trigger, you know, memories that need to come to the surface to heal. It can go through your, it goes through your body, through your chakra centers. It heals you on a level that 
you really feel because you can feel the vibration. So with energy healing, um, with all energy healing, a lot of it, sometimes it's more subtle and sometimes it's, it's more, um, you know, big, like with sound. The first time I did a sound bath, I felt like I was flying in space. I mean, it was the most amazing thing. I was like, I was like, where am I? And I could feel myself lifting. And afterwards I was like, this is awesome. Like I have to do more of this. And when I was in the hospital healing, a very good friend of mine came in with a stroller full of sound bowls and set up this whole sound bath for me mm, and helped me. It was, it was amazing, especially in those moments of, of pain. It's so soothing and, mm -hmm. and really liberates you and, and releases anything you've been kind of holding on to emotionally, physically, spiritually, or otherwise. Have you ever been to the Integratron? Oh, I have not. No. Where is that? Tell me. Okay. <laughs> it's out in Joshua Tree. Okay. And it's this ark that was created by an architect who says that he received the blueprint download on how to build it from an alien. And it's just this, it's, it's been around for decades and decades and decades. It's old. Uh, people will testify that it's amazing. And they do these crystal bowl healings inside. Of course, now they only allow a certain amount. Now they're just starting to open up. Um, so it's not quite as many as they used to be able to contain in that space. But that's something I've always wanted to go experience because just the idea of being in a cavernous place that was built for healing. And then on top of it, to have the sound healing where you're laying there, it just seems so divine. Well, that's amazing because then you also have those frequencies. I imagine hitting whatever this dome is and then radiating back down on you. So, I mean, that's a beautiful, I'm happy to go with you. Here, ah! if you ever open up. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yes. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, I, and I love, thank you so much. That's cool. I would love that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I totally will go. Yes, okay. yes, I love it. <laughs> and I love too. I remember the first time I had booked, uh, there was something that I saw where I lived. I used to live in West Hollywood and I had booked something that was like massage and a crystal bowl healing. And I was like, this for the crystal bowls, but yay for the massage. I was <laughs> totally down for the massage. That was just a, a whatever adjunct. And when the massage was done, this very gifted woman uh, sat me down. It was just for me. It was a private, which is really amazing. And I remember the size of these bowls. They were enormous. And I'm, it's so perfect because this is me and this is my life. This is how everything comes to me. And I'm just laying there, you know, whatever. And all of a sudden she starts playing these. And I don't know how she knew how to play what she played because it really felt very personal. But I will say I found myself crying and it shocked me. The emotional somehow healing I had, whatever was being released from yeah. my body. And at the same time, because the sound is so angelic, you know, it was it's really, really, fine. really amazing like that. And, and Reiki has a very similar, um, feeling people experience a very similar feeling this is all energy healing so you know anytime you have those emotional blocks we have that dissonant energy that's kind of stuck right and mm -hmm. to be able to release that sometimes it's released through tears and becoming emotional and and it's so great because then after as i'm sure you can say too after you feel so much calmer, so much better. It's almost like, wait, what massage? Forget the massage. I want the bowls, right? <laughs> you really have that beautiful release and that stays with you. I mean, just like this memory you have of the healing. Um, when I had my attunement, my first one, I, it was incredible. I had my eyes open for this one and I could see like crystal shapes, like in, in purple on the ceiling. And I thought, I swear I didn't take anything. <laughs> like, what is, what is even going on? And I, I knew exactly when it finished because everything kind of dissolved and went back to normal. And it was an amazing 
wild experience and and one that you kind of chase right like you want that feeling back again um so i i totally understand with the sound healing it's the same it's this beautiful divine healing energy and with sound you're able to create that here on the physical plane and with reiki you're channeling that from source from our divine plane, I guess, if you will, however you want to explain that, <laughs> whatever yeah, you want. Yeah. It's just another language. I like that for healing. And I love that you work with crystals. That's so amazing. Um, what the people get so much on so many levels at the same time. What is your favorite crystal to work with or to have around you in your life? Well, I, gosh, it's so hard to choose, uh, but I would say my favorite probably would be amethyst. Mm. Um, it's, and I'm wearing that, you know, I'm wearing that now. I've always got my amethyst on me. You can see that. Oh, it's spectacular. And it's gorgeous. And, you know, it has that gorgeous divine healing. It opens, you know, it's for your, your third eye, your crown, your connection to source, um, but it also um, has that beautiful energy of the violet flame. It is incredible for protection. So I have it, I have big pieces all over my house. Um, funny, my husband was like, what are you doing with all these rocks? And now he buys these like giant pieces for me. I'm like, yay, I brought you over. <laughs> so what in your picture, this huge amethyst heart that you have? Yes. Yes, my beautiful heart. It's, it's sitting here with me on the desk. I always keep that one close. Um, Can you pick it up and show us? Oh, absolutely. That is a piece. It is heavy. <laughs> there we go. Oh, my gosh. Now, was that a gift from him or was it this? was. So this piece in particular, he gave me um, Christmas right after my surgery. So I was still in my giant back brace and it, which is like a body cast and he thought, okay, it's heavy. So he's like, okay, you better sit down. And then he's like, wait, you can't even lift it out of the bag. Hold on. <laughs> and my kids were all around and they had brought it out and he set it on my lap. He told me to put my hands out and he set it on my lap and talk about emotional when, as soon as I felt this I hadn't even seen it yet just tears started just pouring I mean it was just oh my god I was like sobbing with love I'm gonna cry now I was like sobbing with love over this crystal because I the energy was so incredible and um and now I have you know some beautiful photos my mom took that picture actually the one of me holding the amethyst and Thank you for sharing that. Oh that my is gosh, really special. That's spectacular. Wow. And so, so you're talking about your mom taking your picture in this beautifully supportive husband. Yay, we love him. Yes. And, <laughs> <laughs> so tell tell me a little bit this Hollywood dynasty. I think that's you know a cool, interesting angle. Uh, Hollywood <laughs> dynasty girl goes you know healer. <laughs> it's fascinating. How. <laughs> What, so I'm sure for you, like everybody else in this town, right? It's like, that was my family. You know, that's what I knew. It was no different. Auntie, uncle, you know, mom, da, da, da. So anything for you or just like cool movie tickets to, yeah. know, <laughs> and really good jeans. And really go. Thank you. Yes. No, it was, it was, I guess, like anything else for people who grow up in a family of, you know, doctors or lawyers or um, you know, nurses or whatever it is. Um, mine was the family of artists. So I think I would, it's fair to say our family get togethers were a little bit louder, maybe <laughs> than most, <laughs> uh, a lot of dramatic personalities. Um, and, but with, you know, with my aunt, especially, um, I mean, she was, she was like a, a mega superstar in Hollywood and that of course had its impact on, you know, well, which one are you family. talking about? Because I think oh, they're well, all kind of mega. Okay. I guess they all kind of <laughs> <laughs> Who's uber mega? <laughs> Who's uber mega? Well, so Rita, um, who I'm probably closest to, I guess you would say, um, at least, you know, line wise, um, 
you know, my dad grew up going to our house and, um, and my, you know, my, his cousins, my, we call them my uncles, but they would all go over there and, and they had family get togethers. And it was like any other family, you know, they get into fight over politics. And then, you know, my grandfather's charging out, dragging my grandma and my grandma's like, oh my God, not again. Like, can you guys just stop fighting? You know, so it, you know, we're like really any other family get together, right? Imagine, you know, we say like at Thanksgiving, no tough politics, right? So that's very much what <laughs> the family was like, but everybody, it kind of passed on. Everybody is so, um, you know, gifted. I guess it's like in the blood. And my daughter, even now, she's, she's always dancing and twirling around and singing and putting herself, she has an imaginary YouTube channel that she, well, she thinks it's real, but she has it. I don't want to, she? uh, she's seven. She just oh, turned seven, seven. Oh. but she's such a performer and you just, you see it. And it's one of those things that I guess you just, you know, it's in the blood, you inherit that. And I grew up a dancer and then I went into acting myself. Um, and then I got married and I knew that, you know, like Rita, like Ginger, um, marriages don't do very well in Hollywood. Um, both were married five times. And I knew when I married my husband that I really had to make a choice. You know, do I want to continue with this or do I want to, you know, have my marriage? And I, I chose him. Mm. So like in the forward of my book, I always say, you know, to my, my amazing angel of a husband, like, I will always choose you. And it's, that's where that stems from. And acting was fun. It was, it was great. Um, I really have loved the quiet life, though, I have to say, it's been really nice just working with clients, working with friends, working with my crystals, writing, I love writing. Um, so this is all kind of new. It's, it's almost like it's, the limelight keeps pulling me back. Like, no, we're going to bring you on camera. Like, no, but I left. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, with the family, I mean, fun stories. I don't know. We had family politics and, and dinners, but then there was also a lot of love and a lot of really warm, um, protective energy. Um, when you grow up in, in a light like that, where there's, you know, there's paparazzi and there's a pe people always asking questions, you become very um, protective. And that's one thing that was really nice, um, that maybe is a little bit more than, than your average, just because there was something to protect immediately from that you could see. So I, I guess, but other than that, I mean, it's just kind of, you know, just a loud, big family. I mean, I, I think Italians would know what I'm talking about. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and uh, are any of them your customers? Any of the Italians? C'è la luna mezzo mare. Are any of your dynasty? I love that word. I mean, I'm going to use it a lot because I don't get to say that often. Uh, yeah. But are any of these dynasty people um, or, or their children thereof, are they your customers? Do they come to you for Reiki? Have you helped anybody? Um, like in my family line? No, I haven't. I mean, they were, there was a very small line. Um, they didn't people have a lot listen of listen to this interview. Come see her. She's I know, I know. You're such a love. Thank you. Um, you know, my, my cousin, um, the princess, um, Yasmin, she's in New York and, um, you know, she's, she's beautiful. She's done a lot of work for the Alzheimer's foundation since Rita had, um, Alzheimer's, but, you know, she's lives a very different life than, than I grew up with. And, um, her sister, Rebecca, she passed, um, I guess it's quite a few years ago now. And, 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 you know, tragically, um, Princess Yasmin, her son passed as well. So, you know, the family's pretty small on that end. I think my parents were trying to make up for that by having seven kids. <laughs> they wanted to keep the family line strong. So I'm the, I'm the oldest of seven, um, which is still, I can't believe sometimes. I mean, I have three myself. I have no idea how my parents did it. Like that was amazing. 
<laughs> yeah, kudos to them. But I, I love that. It's funny how we make up for things in different ways based upon what we experience. We replicate or we change. I also really love the fact that in a lot of ways, you're shifting your own lineage, right? And you're just altering, you're taking the energy because you said we are all artists. Uh, so you're taking still this art energy and yet channeling it in a whole new direction at a really apropos time because the world really needs people like you to get us through what we've been through and certainly into this new age that is dawning. I mean, it's here, right? This is happening. There is no turning back. We made the choice to be here at this auspicious time to definitely usher in something new. What are your feelings about what's next on the planet with people and with what's possible using your Reiki, your crystals and your chakra work? Yes, well, I, I have to say there's always a silver lining, right? So this pandemic, yes, it was very hard and has catapulted us into a whole new light. Um, but the silver lining here too is that people really had a chance to turn in and tune in to what was important, to what is important, to their self-care, to how to take care of themselves. I mean, we couldn't even see doctors for a good part of the, the pandemic. And using Reiki and crystals, I'm not saying replace your doctors. I'm not saying you don't need any of that Western medicine because I've used it myself. So, you know, yes, you take your meds by all means, but why not also channel Reiki energy to that medication, which I do a lot, um, especially for chemo patients. Um, just to make sure that medicine is going for their highest good and Reiki and crystal energy and working with your chakras, keeping yourself balanced, keeping yourself centered, a strong hara, as the Japanese call it, our earth key, which is, you know, our, our solar plexus, our sacral and our root chakras, keeping these strong and grounded really resonates into everything else that we do in our life. So having this opportunity to turn in and tune in to our own self-care has really been a gift. And I hope that people continue. I hope it's not like, oh, the world's back open. Let's go mask off back to, you know, our nonsense and things that aren't really important. Um, no, let's change that. Let's change this dialogue. Let's change the way we approach our life, the way we speak to ourselves, the way we speak to our loved ones, like really hold this, take it as the lesson that it's been, the blessing that it has been, and move forward using that, this new knowledge that we have. You know, use crystals, use Reiki, use sound healing, use any of the other amazing tools that are in this book to, to really fill in the gaps in your own care, in your own self-healing. And um, that's, that's kind of what I did. Western medicine by itself wasn't doing it, but this really filled in those gaps. And now, you know, I get to live here with, without pain, with a, a wholesome, loving marriage, with, you know, changing and breaking those family patterns. Um, instead of fighting with people and getting into it over politics or, you know, throwing in the towel when things are hard, you know, I've, I've chosen to approach this a little bit differently and hope that Maybe doing it a little different will work out better, not just for me, but you know, for him, for our kids, for generations to come. I mean, we, the choices we make now in this life, even the choices this week will affect us next week. So make choices that you know, will resonate in a way that you can live a better and happier life. It's not to say you're always gonna be happy. Everybody's gonna have harder moments. I mean, we all have, we all have our thing, right? As I say, we all have our thing, the thing that we have to deal with, that we have to overcome, that we're gifted with in this life to learn about ourselves and how to, how to work through it. And using energy healing tools is just a beautiful way to, to help you heal through this, help you peel those layers one by one and face those, those shadows, that shadow side, that those demons, those, those skeletons in the closet, you know, bring them out and put them in new light and see, you know, see what happens. Um, we had a year to lock down. What do we have to lose? You know, it's, can the world get crazier? I mean, you know, the time moving forward is now. <laughs> you know, it's really interesting what you say uh, about the importance of 
what we do and how we impact. So I read something recently. I never knew this fact before. So basically it's it's a book about why it's so important to clean up our cells and, and how to do these very particular cleanses if you know uh, medical medium, the book. So one of the things that he talks about is the fact that when we do a cleanse, we're not just cleansing ourselves; we're cleansing all the generations that came before us. Meaning that everything they ingested, breathed, coal mines they worked in, poor oceans, poor water, poor food, famines, medicine, uh, illnesses, et cetera, that got passed down genetically. So when we clean things up, what you're talking about internally, which creates also the external change. This is like another kind of cleanse, a Reiki cleanse. The, it's very important. And it really is true. We're changing the emotional lineage and the ancestry of everything that we're leaving behind on this planet and to those we love. So it, I, it, like that is a big point that you make. And I agree with you. I think it is incumbent on us to do the work. We may have been bequeathed, you know, a load we're not thrilled with for some of us, you know, a little more difficult, but you know, you must add big shoulders <laughs> to make that, make that choice in this lifetime to come in and clean that stuff up and, and you can do it. You can do it. And that's it. That's the point is you can do it. And, you know, I mean, what are we going to do? Let it defeat us. And, and then what happens? You're going to come back and do it all over again in another form. I mean, what's the point? Why do you want to do that? Like, no, we have to get through. And, you know, we're all faced with something. Nobody gets off easy, you know, in this life, nobody gets it scot-free. Everybody has something that they're dealing with. That's where the you know, the quote, always be kind because you never know what somebody's going through. So true. And it's so true. Even this, the person who looks like, oh my God, she has it all. Look at her. She's got the perfect life. She's got the, the right style. She's got the adoring children, the wonderful husband, the big house. But you don't know that inside she's, you know, suffering or has a mental illness or, you know, has has a mom that, um, you know, is off, you know, in a closet somewhere shooting up. Like, you never know what other people are going. Sorry, that's a graphic uh, description, but, <laughs> but it's true because you never know what someone's going through. And all you can do is be kind and speak from a place of love mm -hmm. and work on healing yourself because when you vibrate higher, everybody around you does too. Yeah. Just think about when you go to, you know, a market, you can tell, you can sense when someone's having a bad day, you feel that energy coming off of them, whether you're a Reiki healer, a sound healer, or just, you know, a, a doctor or, you know, a school teacher, you feel that energy from, from that person. So imagine, and you know, you want to get away like, Oh, this, you know, makes you uncomfortable. So imagine if you're vibrating from that place of love, from that high vibration, everybody is attracted. They want to be around you. You make them feel good. Likewise, when you're around a healer, they make you feel good. And there, there's a reason for that. You know, they're vibrating at a higher level. And when you come close to that, you know, your energy shifts to match that as well. And that's what's so beautiful about working with crystals is you're literally, you know, helping your own vibration raise to that of the crystal energy mm -hmm. and working with, like you're saying, ancestral trauma. Look, it's all in our DNA, right? We're, we're made up of a huge amount of water. All of our DNA comes from our parents, which comes from theirs, from theirs, from theirs. And you get a little piece of that with every generation, another piece comes through. And we don't know how it's gonna come through. Like my mom has blue eyes, but I have brown. Okay, well, so I got this trauma, my brother got a different one. That doesn't mean that we just, you know, blow it off and accept it. No, we have to work on healing that trauma so that we can move through. You know, if I have bad eyes, I'm gonna put some glasses on. I'm not gonna just go ahead and live through life blind, right? You wanna work on, on healing yourself so that you have that, you have that freedom and hopefully, you know, that divine connection that we're all, you know, we're really all searching for and then pass that 
when you have your kids or your nieces or your nephews, pass those messages to them so then they can live a happier life. They can work on their own trauma or have the tools that they need to get through it. So we're not, you know, numbing ourselves with all these other things, yes, right? 100%. Well, we're getting toward the end, but I, I want to ask you if you'd be willing to do a blessing. I know you've got a, let me, I hope I'm going to say it right. Raid you, right? Rehu, just Rehu. Yeah. Rehu blessing Rehu. that you perform. Would you do one for the audience? Oh, I would be delighted. Of mm. course. I love channeling Reiki. Of course. Okay. So a Rehu blessing is very straightforward. This won't be quite the same as my attunement in the book, but um, a Rehu blessing is a blessing all on its own. So if you're just take a moment and, you know, be open to receive. And if you want to open your hands, just lay them kind of palms up, um, wherever on your lap, if you're laying down, whatever feels good for you, just be comfortable and just take a moment to receive. And I'm going to ask if you can just talk us through this since there will also be, this will be syndicated also on podcast and radio. So I know people will be very curious. Of course, you can go to youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger to actually see this beautiful prayer and the movements that Athena is doing. So go ahead and breathe easy. And as I bring my hands above, and bring them down below. And I want you to just allow yourself to be open, receive the Reiki as I channel. You should feel this here on the top of your head, just at your crown. And you feel at the front and the back of your head right here on your forehead. <sighs> to other side or side of your head, just above the ears. Bring me awareness of the diamond of the sun and love source energy to you, Tao and the third eye. So wow, now, back of your mouth, your head, allowing that love to filter through your words to yourself and others. to your throat that you were able to hear and receive the truths of others as well as speak your own. To your heart center that you vibrate from a place of love. The choices that you make in your life are now your truth in a heart-centered space. And channeling to your open palms that you may use your hands for the gifts that resonate for you, the actions you physically take in the world will be for your heart's sake. And then lifting that energy from below your feet up through your centers and raining down in love and light. 
and bring your hands to prayer position and just take a moment of gratitude for yourself, for the energy of Reiki, for allowing yourself to receive this divine healing love. Mm, girl <laughs> wow i felt that that was so beautiful i'm ready for a nap now <laughs> yeah that was ah i don't know not i don't want to say relaxing it's um because i feel incredibly clear and present and sharp but something just sort of drained out, something that needed to drain out. <laughs> um, but I really energetically felt what was going on. That was incredible. Oh, thank so it you, makes Joe. sense. Like the distance healing, you can, I can see, and people who are, um, are listening as well as watching on YouTube, you can understand why distance healing works. Yes. So well, energy is not bound by space or time. It's, you know, it's all encompassing and we got to just get out of our own way, you know, let those rules go to the side and allow ourselves to receive. Yes. And amazing to connect. I mean, there's so many people that are going to be enjoying this and, and amazing. This was the first time I've actually talked my way through a Rehu blessing. I've never actually, um, described it like that while I do it. So that was really an amazing first. Thank you for that. That was beautiful. Yes. And yeah, uh, good because it actually was an enhancement too. So for those who are listening to the podcast, you can still see the entire process, the Rehu blessing. Rehu blessing. Rehu yeah. blessing. Now I've got it. Uh, so you can see it because it, it's quite beautiful. She's using her hands. And uh, so Athena Bari, this is Dare to Dream. What are you next Dare to Dream? As you said, silver lining, you accomplished a lot during COVID, straight, strengthens your love, strengthened your Reiki practice, wrote books, and are creating all these lovely healings out into the world. What's next for you though? What do you next dream oh. about doing? My next dream, um, just to reach as many as I can, um, I am putting together a Crystal Reiki Academy so that others can also find more, um, more answers that they're seeking and hopefully um, it will support them on their path, their journey. They can learn more about um, how to do Reiki themselves, like get certified. They'll be able to learn about crystals and how to heal themselves with chakra centers. And um, I'd love to write another book. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens if I'm dreaming big. And the other is the main is just, you know, that my children grow up happy and healthy and I'm able to be here to support them being the best that I can be. And we can find your book on Amazon and your website, crystalreikihealer.com. Thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been a joy. Oh, thank you so much, love. Such a blessing. Thank you to everybody who listened. And please make sure to have some water to assist in grounding after your Rehu blessing. Excellent. Thank you so much for having me, love. Yes. I end today's show with this quote from Nikola Tesla. If you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. Subscribe to the Dare to Dream podcast so you can hear this weekly number one transformation conversation. My guest next week is world-renowned psychic Robert Lindsay Milne, who will be taking listener questions and offering insight and guidance. Go to the YouTube channel and thank you for the comments you guys leave. I read them all, I respond, and I'm so grateful for you being on this journey too. YouTube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. And remember, don't just dare to dream, dare to turn all your dreams into your reality. <laughs>